Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. We've recently launched our Patreon page, which can be found at cynicaldeveloper.com forward slash Patreon. If you aren't familiar with Patreon, it's an easy way for those who are interested in this show to help out by simply pledging a small amount each month in sponsorship. Now that could be as little as $5 a month, which is about £3.80, or as much as you like. You will enable us to dedicate more time creating more content to help you, including videos, more blog posts, and even more shows. So if you can, head over to cynicaldeveloper.com forward slash Patreon and get involved. In this episode, I want to cover a topic that I've been asked about a lot lately, and that is how I go about learning a new technology, specifically learning a new programming language and learning it quickly or quickly enough to to be able to build something with it. I think this was spurred on by me talking about what I wanted to do this year with the podcast and everything. Uh, and that included learning more about AngularJS, learning ReactJS and a few other things. And that I've also started uh, building Alexa skills as well. Uh, people were a little taken aback um, that I was going to attempt to learn so much new tech all at once or over a very short period of time. Uh, the commonality between what they're asking specifically was how did I plan to learn these things as learning a new language has always been a challenge. I think the challenge comes from us being told everyone is different and you learn things in different ways. Some learn through listening, others by watching, and the rest by doing. It's these findings that are pushing our schools and other institutes to try new ways to teach classes. Uh, which, you know, it's all, it's all good and, and, and that, but uh, in uh, my own experience, I think it's a lot of garbage. Um, and I'll, I'll go into to really sort of why I think that is. And we all learn something from each of those inputs. That's undeniable. The listening, the reading, the watching, the doing. But everybody learns more and gets more value out of uh, doing, in my opinion. Now, this can be seen when you talk to people about uh, building stuff with software. If you talk to someone who is an academic and has never built a real-world application, they'll be able to tell you the exact way to build your application, what theory and principles uh, that you'll need to apply. Um, And they could probably discuss the merits of different solutions and things with you. But could they sit down and actually build the application themselves? Probably not. The other side of that coin is that uh, you've got those that haven't done any reading on the topic or they don't understand the basic principles, but they've built applications. These people um, can build an application but when you get the end product it's not maintainable it's not efficient and uh, when you get into the code it's going to be really really hard going there's going to be duplicated code codes that are thousands of lines long and there's just horrible pile of steaming well you know you get the idea there is a fine line a balance really that uh, you need to find between the reading the listening the doing um to to be the most effective when it comes to to learning something and learning something quickly. And it's about finding what works for you. But this is the process that I go through. Um, It does leave some holes in knowledge at times, but it gives you enough of an understanding to uh, to get started and be confident enough to say that you know that, uh, that language or that technology. Do keep in mind that no matter how much you understand a language, you'll probably face something new uh, that you don't know anything about um, or that you've never heard of before when you come to work with different teams, if you're in a larger company or if you come to work for a different company altogether. You need to remember that you have the skills just to pick it up and learn it quickly where, with uh, with a little bit of effort from yourself. And that, that gives you a little bit more belief in, in what you can do. Um, so there's the sort of four stages that uh, that, that I'd go through, which is listen, read, watch and do and do it again. So the the listen stage is go and find a podcast, uh, an episode uh, maybe about the language that you want to find out more about. Find out if it's actually good for the problem that you've got because if it's not, there's really no point in learning something um, if it's not going to solve that problem for you. 
Uh, and by doing by doing this, by going and, and having a quick listen to uh, to a half an hour podcast, it really saves you hours and hours and hours uh, going and trying to build stuff, trying to get an understanding and a feel for the language to then realise, well, I've spent a week on this and uh, it's of absolute no use to me. So stage two is read. Once I've found out that the language is pretty uh, good, it is going to do something for me or I need it for a job or something, then uh, I'd go to the website for the language and read the instruction, have a quick glance over any of the instruction sections that they might have, reading, you know, like tutorials and stuff, but reading all the documentation and getting a full understanding. It's not a bad thing, but you know, when do you want to be able to build with this language? Do you want that to be today, tomorrow, next week, or next year? Glancing over it is going to be the quickest route to getting you coding with the language rather than spending weeks reading everything. And then when you come to write something, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to have to go back and read that again. You know, read it when you need it. Next stage is watch and do. Now, what I'd say for, for this is go to the sites like Pluralsight or Udemy or any of the course sites like that and find some comprehensive courses that uh, that teach you the languages or the language that you're looking at. Try to pick a course which is up to date um, and where you build an application or a project or something with the course. So at the end of it, you have a good reference project that you can go back to and you go, oh, I know I did this in the course, I did to do it, and you can go back quickly and go, oh, right, that's how I would do it. There's no point in sitting for 40 plus hours in front of a course um, and just watching and listening to it. You'll take in some of it, but it's going to be a small percentage, if anything at all. Don't lie to yourself and say that a YouTube course is going to uh, be enough. Because on the whole, it probably isn't. And the standards on uh, a lot of YouTube um, courses are a lot lower um, than in the sites like Pluralsight and Udemy because they're vetted and they're controlled. So so it is worth having a look at that. Obviously, going and looking on YouTube for quick tutorials about how to do a certain thing with it with a language, fantastic. Get on there, learn that snippet. That's what they're really good at. You know, short videos that tell you how to take uh, X and make it into Y to do Z on my screen. Then, yeah, get on them. They're great. And the last stage is do it again. No, don't do the course again. But uh, now build a project with that language not the same project that you just built in the course. Now, this is the icing on the cake and where I find you commit what you've been discovering to memory. Um, I like to build a project with the new technology that I've built before uh, in another language, uh, a language that I'm more confident with. So what and why rebuild something that you've built before? I suggest building a familiar project because you know what all the pitfalls are, you know what the final product looks like, and you know what uh, success looks like with that uh, finished product as well. You, know, you will write the code in your new language, um, but you're going to benefit from the understanding that you have from the other language or other languages that uh, you've written this project in. So when you come up against a problem, you can think, how would I do this in my main language? Uh, and then think, okay, so that's how I do it in that. Well, how do I do it in this new language? And maybe some of the terminology will help you think through the process and you can think back to what you've learned in the course. Or you can have a quick Google or Bing or whatever you use and uh, use that terminology to find the solution to what you're working on. You, know, you use this previous knowledge and uh, of how and why to find that new solution with your with the new technology. It's, uh, it's a bit of a, a shortcut through rather than sitting there and just scratching your head over something completely new that you've never never built before. Now, having said that, that's not always going to be the way because it's not always going to give you the uh, the answer that you want for all languages because some languages work in completely different ways. But on the whole, you're probably going to get at least a, a good idea of what's going on. And before you decide to learn something new, ask yourself, why do I need to learn this? Is it to get a new job? Is it to find a better solution to a problem that I've got? Is it to become more proficient as a developer? Or is it just to say that uh, I know another language? If you answered yes to any of those, except the last one, then great. Go get started, get stuck in, go learn something. It'd be, it'd be great. Uh, if you only answered yes to the last one, don't waste your time. Go and do something that's a benefit to you now. And if you answered no to all of them, then there really isn't any point in uh, trying to learn it, is there? If you're not going to use it, then you're not going to learn it. You know, this whole process isn't foolproof, but it's a good starting point. And to gain a better understanding, 
is going to come with uh, time that you practice and you that you use this new technology and if you're using it continuously for a new job or a new project you're going to learn it uh, in a lot more depth but because you took that shortcut through you were actually programming with it quicker and you should get to a solution faster so anyway uh, make sure to tune in next week where we catch up with jamie taylor about dotnet core 2.0 and uh, for now thanks for listening to cynical developer I'm James Sludart, and this was How to Learn Quickly. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links, show notes for each episode. And if you enjoy this episode, please leave a review on your favourite podcast platform, iTunes, Stitch, whatever it is, and help the cynical developer to reach more developers around the globe.